Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy! Welcome back to more Pokemon Platinum! Last time, we paid a visit to the Lost Tower and left Salacion Town to the north, where we found, of all things, a maid cafe. Uh, I would rag on them for a bad location, but they had tons of customers, so what do I know? This time, we are going to be heading out to the east, as it's the only direction we can go, because it's clearly such a challenge to move a few Psyducks out of the way. Uh, here on this route, Route 215, it's pretty much always going to be raining, so obviously you don't want to be using your fire types. If you somehow have something that knows thunder, it'd be great, though. Today, the loot is a victory from you! Hey, buddy, I don't know if that's supposed to be a pickup line or what, but I'm not really sure I like it so much. So, as we get this battle started against Ruin Maniac Calvin, let's see something right here. Go Scythe! Yes! We have a new nickname! I decided to name Curly a Scythe, a combination of Psychic and, well, Scythe. Because, well, Curly is evolution, you know, you know how the whole thing is. This was first suggested by Dakota Walsh on Twitter, as well as, um, UD Timberhog on YouTube. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, I hope, sir. I hope, sir. <laughs> that was not intentional. And then, Olsi Dragon on YouTube. Okay, I'm sorry, I just, I love how... With different accents, some people say YouTube. <laughs> so, um, here we have this Bronzor. This is gonna be really, uh, tough. Uh, I certainly hope this will go... Okay, at least it didn't confuse me or something. I used Imprison right there, which will seal any sort of moves that I have that are shared between our two movesets. I think it has Confuse Ray, so that's kind of bad for me. Uh, anyway. One thing I do have to say is, I have to commend you guys. There were a lot of good nicknames for Curly. Like, it was especially good this time around. Um, one nickname that came up a lot was because it had a brave nature and it often dozes off. A lot of you were saying Susano. Um, some of you were suggesting some names based on, like, the Knights of the Round Table and King Arthur and all that. But one name that was really good in that vein, and I almost picked it, was Circumvent. Like, Circumvent, because it was teleporting away from me. I thought that was really cool, and I thought that was a really interesting name, but, um... I wound up choosing not to go for it, because one, it went over the character limit if I wanted the space in it, and for two, um, if you divide that spelling into three words, it kind of means something naughty. <laughs> and I would not be able to contain my immaturity during seeing that name, so yeah. It was really clever, though. I liked it a lot. Uh, some other ones, I think there was Houdini, because it teleported away from me so many times before I caught it. So, yeah, all around, really good nicknames this time around, especially so. Uh, this shield on will not die though. Jeez, come on, please go down. Of course, I have two steel types in fighting that I said I wasn't gonna raise on my team, and even shield on saying I didn't recommend it, and here it's just giving me so much trouble. Bodhi, you are getting that. We are getting very lucky in this fight. First a crit from Acrobat, and now Bodhi is getting a double quick lock. Man, we got that. We're almost back up to full health already. Scythe grows to level thirty. Bodhi can take some more experience as well. I can't win. You're too strong for me to win. And you're too much of a staller for you to win. I guess. Well, Curlia is evolving. Just in time for its shiny new nickname. Or not. You can press B to cancel a Pokemon's evolution at any time. And a lot of people... Uh, a lot of you had pieced this together already. I would be a fool to go for Gardevoir when I have a plus attack nature. So I think you know what I'm going to go for. You know, Max Ether just laying in the middle of the road. Uh, perhaps this jogger was guarding his precious belongings by running circles around it. Uh, you over here. Do unto others as they do unto you. Yep, it's payback. It's good for Pokemon battles, but if you do that in real life, there will be no end of fighting, that's for sure. We get TM66 Payback. This is a dark type move that'll do double damage if we've taken damage in the same turn. Basically using it after your opponent is good. Go over here, and this is one of my favorite hidden items. Right in the middle of this, we have a Revive! Yet another one of these things! Just throwing them at us like candy, even though it does kind of look like candy. Go over this way and cut down this tree as well. Terpidius, you're getting a lot of chances to shine. I gotta say, I really like cutting this game. I really don't like Rock Smash in this game, because every time there's Rock Smash, it's so many rocks in a row you have to hit it with. You come with your heart pounding. Think you can win like that? Hiya! During that battle, I came to a realization. Scythe is the strongest member of our team at level 30. I don't think it really needs the experience share anymore. I think what I'm going to do instead is put that onto Supernova. We're seeing a lot of Steel type Pokemon as well as some Black Belts that have Fighting type Pokemon on their teams. I think honestly the experience share would be better if it were on Supernova because as a normal type, 
it's not going to really be able to contribute all that much. Not only that, but a lot of Gen 1 Pokemon that evolve through stones, they don't learn good moves after they have evolved. And because of that, I think I want to get Supernova higher up there on the levels before using a stone on it whenever we get one. Just kind of want to be prepared. And for that reason, I think I'll also give Scythe the Meta Plate because it also has magically, we just have a lot of grass type moves, a lot of them coming out of our ears. Get a Fist Plate right here. The original one breathed alone before the universe came. That buffs the power of fighting type moves. I don't have any use for that personally, but maybe you do. Cut down this tree over here. We have some more berry plants. Let's see me fail at naming these berries again. I'm gonna guess, uh, Bluck and Orin. Bluck, okay, so I got one of the two. Actually, no. Changing my second answer to Petcha. Yep, got it. For once, I actually know my berries well. It took me how long, even though I grow these things every day? Yeah. Gonna go down here. And we get a Hyper Potion! 120 HP recovered. Wow, I think I've already gone over that though. Yeah, in fact, I'm sure I have. So right here, little me playing Pokemon Diamond for the first time when he was 17. I got stuck on this part for so long. I was biking all around the route, had no idea where to go. For some reason, I couldn't tell that this was something I could just walk down. I thought because it was on the back wall, it just wasn't something that I could go on. I just didn't notice that it was there because of perspective. It's weird. I really don't know how I manage that. Pest you. And I get the, you know, I get the feeling. Let me, let me try this. They've been hiding a lot of items in the tall grass lately. Let's see. Yes. Yes. Okay, so go over this way. Down there. Ultra Ball. Move over, Pokemon XD. Platinum is the new overly generous game with its items. HP up! Get a chance to talk about the Ultra Ball, dude. Okay, Ultra Ball times two rate times two catch rate of a normal Pokeball, so that's really good. Uh, still not as good as the Dusk Ball though. Dusk Ball, when used at nighttime or in caves, is still better than an Ultra Ball. It's really that good. A TM34 Shock, what three in a wow? Okay, catching up in order. We also have the HP up, permanently raising the HP stat of our Pokemon. We were just talking about Supernova, and I see no better Pokemon, except maybe Bodhi, to use that on, but I think I'll go Supernova. It is our tank, after all. And then TM34 Shockwave. That is, I think, an electric-type move that never misses, like Magical Leaf, same power and everything. Yes, I always get that confused with Heat Wave, because uh, Heat Wave hits both enemies in a double battle, but that can miss, so... Yeah, it's not hard to see why I'd get that confused. I didn't think it was morning yet! Eleven damage. I guess you could say that was a pointless endeavor. Supernova grows to level thirty right there, so the experience share is already working its magic. Keep going. We're actually almost to the end of the route already, and I still haven't had a good chance to go over the encounters. Right over there, we have a double battle. I know the double battles go a little bit quicker, but we can always hope that it's going to be a long double battle so that I can have a chance to go over them there. I was going to use the repel, but there's five tiles of grass left in the whole route. We'll just get an encounter anyway. That was bad. Encounter rates are so high in this game. Let's get into this. I'll take on anyone. It can only make me stronger. That is, unless you lose, in which case you gain no experience points. Taking on Veilstone's gym, bleh, 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 Veilstone gym Challenge, but first, maybe I'll finally get to talk. So we have a double battle right here. This is going to be our last required trainer battle on the route. Six Pokemon, perfect. We're going to go over the new encounters. First off, Actually, no. I have a bone to pick with this Pokemon right here. No, not Roselia. Gligar. Gligar's Platinum Sprite is terrible. It looks blue when it's supposed to be purple. And Gligar's Shiny Sprite is blue. I can't tell you how many times in playing Platinum casually, I have encountered a Gligar in the wild, thought it was shiny, couldn't tell the difference even after looking it up, and I just had to catch it to make sure that I didn't run into a shiny without realizing it. And of course, it never is. Sorry, but just really bad fail on the color palette side of things. Anyway, um, encounters for real this time. First off, I know you've been waiting for this one if you've been playing along. It's Kadabra. Wait no more if you didn't want to bother with Abra at all earlier. Special sweeper, good to go, out of the box, right here. For potentially the low, low price of 200 Pokemon dollars, depending on what you catch it in. I've already gone over what makes Kadabra so good earlier when comparing it to Abra. But I'll at least repeat that it is excellent at doing damage, because when you're talking about the Abra family, it bears repeating. It really does. Can't say it enough. 
Best part about Kadabra is that it can evolve as soon as you catch it if you can trade, and a lot of Pokemon coming up are weak to it. It's the easy mode Pokemon of this route. Second is Lickitung! This bulky normal type was nothing special for a while, but like many other Pokemon, Gen 4 changed that. It gained a much needed evolution in Licky Licky, which you'll need to roll out to obtain. It learns it at level 33 if you're curious about that. It's not the greatest normal type out there, but it can take hits, and I personally really like this family for a weird reason we'll be seeing later. Trust me on this, it's very me, but anyway. Well, out of the saliva and into the water, thankfully, we have Meryl! With huge power, the physical special split, and a level 18 evolution, Meryl is good to go right off the bat. Can only be found this early in Platinum. Only thing that's kind of a shame is that it doesn't get Aqua Jet except through breeding in this game. The reason why I bring this up is that if this were any later game in the series, it would naturally have it as soon as we would catch it at these levels. Unfortunately, it might not be the best Pokemon long term if you're not willing to shell it for some TMs or breed, but it's a great short term water type due to its high stats at a low level. Also, I would be remiss if I didn't bring this up in Meryl's bio, but Meryl's pre-evolution of Azuril is the only time in any evolutionary family of Pokemon where it has a different gender ratio. Because of this, one third of all female Azurals, when they evolve into Meryl, grow a dick. <laughs> that really is it. Drifblim being faster than Curlia, didn't see that coming. Uh, Ralph's knowing Psychic? I really didn't see that coming if my voice is any indication. At least it didn't do too much damage to Acrobat. Uh, this got kind of bad because that thing's got a lot of double teams under its belt. I, I guess Supernova, it's your time to shine with your magical leave? Let's hope this works out. Wow. Uh, on the note of seeing Drifblim, it feels kind of odd having this be the first Drifblim that we're seeing in this play there. I know we've seen Drifloon already though, but I just mean, as somebody who played Diamond a lot back in the day, Drifblim was kind of Fantina's signature Pokemon. It feels kind of odd to see her not have it at all in Platinum, and for just some random Ace Trainer to be our first time seeing it at all. I know this technically isn't a required battle, because you'd always talk to- well, no actually, because the other one would see- never mind, this is a required battle, because no matter how you talk to him from the side, you are fighting them no matter what, because the other one will see you when you walk in front of him. So yeah. Well, the unlikely duo of Supernova and Acrobat, I get the feeling that Buizel knows Aqua Jet, but I guess I don't really need to- that doesn't really matter too much, because we're almost at the end of this route. Just use Magic Leaf on you, uh, I guess Air Cutter, sure. I was tempted to confuse that Lickitung, but I don't really think Acrobat's gonna hang- Wow! Um, Acrobat for tank? I guess to be fair, Poison Flying is a pretty awkward type to deal with, so... In a way, it can be a little bit tanky at times, but I wouldn't describe its stats as tanky, not even close. <laughs> there we go, take out that Buizel, and Lickitung! You're staring me down with that just tongue flapping in the wind. I don't know. Look at tongue looks cool though, but if you've ever like seen it with metronome, if you've ever seen it with its mouth closed, it looks really creepy. Seriously, just look at it. Uh, okay. I know some people are going to say I shouldn't teach metronome. It is luck based. It is that yeah, random. You will use any move in whatever game you are playing. But you know, Sing hasn't been working out too well for me. It really hasn't. It's 55% accurate. It's one of the worst status moves out there. I think Metronome could be fun. I think I'll avoid using this in multiplayer battles because it might be kind of cheap if I get something super powerful. I don't know, I'll ask whatever opponent I'm fighting next if they're okay with it or whatever before, and we'll go from there, but... <laughs> I don't know, I, I, Metronome could be really fun. Let's try it out here against uh, Lickitung. Use it on yourself, uh, just because you're the one kind of doing the finger waggle. Uh, that sounds kind of bad, actually. Let's use Wing Attack right here. And I'm hoping that Acrobat doesn't KO so we can at least see this move do something. Let's see. What do we get in our first metronome? Power trick. Uh, so that switches attack and defense. That could be kind of good, kind of bad. Um, I do have a lot of HP at the very least, so it doesn't inhibit my tanking abilities too much. Let's try it again. I don't think wing attack's really gonna be enough to knock it out. If I don't get an attacking move though, this might be kind of bad, but Acrobat, you can take one for the team so we can potentially have a good laugh with metronome, right? Silver wind. Okay, that would be kind of good to get early in a fight. It's a bug type 60 power special move that ups all of your stats potentially at a random chance. Those weren't so bad. Nothing really outstanding though, but still pretty good. Both of us gained something from this. Huh, you didn't, you gained no experience. And I took $3,000. I think I'm the only one who gained. Besides I leveled up and you didn't. Okay, now I'm just being a jerk. Mago Berry, I don't think we've seen this yet. I think the other one's a Wiki Berry, not mistaken. Yes it is! I was just growing these, so I have a bit of an unfair advantage in knowing exactly what it is, I'll be honest on that one. 
So we have a lot of new berries. I've been doing all the daily events. I've been seeing Berry Master every chance I get. I've been going to that guy in uh, Amity Square every chance I get. And look at this. Dun, 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 dun. I'm so proud of my berry growing efforts. So we have some new ones. Uh, Wiki Berry and Mago Berry, they have the same effect, but they make different types of poffins. We'll get into that later, of course. Already seen these. Nanap Berry is also a poffin ingredient. Nomal is as well. Spell On is. Spell On's actually a really good one for contests, though, but we'll be getting into that later once again. Keep saying that. Kind of tempted to plant some berries right there. I thing is, off the top of my head, I legit don't know if I need to water these berries or not because it's raining. I don't know. Like, something tells me that, like, I've done it before, but, like, it's one of those things that I always feel like I should be able to do, but I don't know for a fact, and I'm not sure if I've ever actually looked it up because I'm always just on the safe side and water them anyway, but, yeah, I don't know. I really don't. Wanted to go to Celestic Town, but there's a Pokemon blocking the way. Who knows why they're there, but they're not budging. Ah, uh, buddy. You two shared my pain of it being so tough for your puny little arms to move some Psyducks aside. Well, we are right here. We're at a new city. Let's go in. This really shady atmosphere. We have Team Galactic right here. Hey, you. Yeah, you. Pikachu. This is Team Galactic's warehouse. It ain't no playground for kids. Does the other guy say the same? No. I did not want to go back in there. I was trying to talk to you, but 3DS circle pad at times on DS games can be a little bit problematic. I don't know why I sounded like a drill sergeant there for a second. This is the awesome Team Galactic's awesome warehouse. Little kid like you should be playing at the Pokemon gym. After all, the gym leader happens to be a kid just like you. That is fair enough point. I'd like to go and play there. Get a star piece. Uh, that's an item that you can sell, but I think in this game it has another purpose that we'll be seeing later. It's also a currency, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah. Uh, as he was saying, though, this is the site of our next Pokemon gym battle, so we've gotten here already. It's kind of hard to believe that we're at our fourth gym battle already. I mean, I know that we've been get going for showing everything in the game, so we haven't been progressing as fast as maybe some other Let's Plays of this game have before, but I don't know. It just it feels kind of odd to already be almost halfway there, being at our fourth gym battle out of eight, but still, just, yeah, we'll heal up. And there's a lot to do in Veilstone City. So much so that I don't think we'd be able to knock it all out this time. I think this would end up being a ridiculously long video if we did. So I think the only thing that I'm really going to show off for right now is uh, the Veilstone department store. This place has got a lot of items. I also like how it makes the automatic door opening sound even though it opens like front and back. It's kind of weird. So there are a lot of shops here. A lot of useful things you can get. You can now buy Ultra Balls. Uh, we can also buy Poke Dolls that allows you to escape from wild Pokemon battles for free. And you can even buy Max Repels. Now, if you do the calculations, 200 steps to 250 steps for 200 more Pokemon dollars. It's a slightly worse value than Super Repel. But personally, I don't really care. It makes me open the menu less. Uh, you don't yet have that awesome block of text. It's like, hey, would you like to use another Repel? That didn't exist at this point in the series. So to save us time, make it so I don't have to open my inventory quite as much in a video, I think it's justified enough that I'm buying Max Repels right here. So let's see what else do we have here. We have Max Potions, that restores all health. Um, nothing else we haven't seen here. Full heal, that would have been really nice to have um, quite a few times already. I don't want to use my old Gateau because it's the only one of its kind in the entire game and I just kind of feel kind of wrong doing that. Uh, there's a basement down here. Which this right here. Uh, food and produce, okay. Uh, Poffins, yeah. So you can buy Poffins down here if you don't want to make your own for contest. They're not as good as what you could make normally. Uh, here are lava cookies. These are 200 Pokemon dollars each. Um, much better value than the full heals, and they are the exact same item in every sense of the word. Rage candy bars, you are sold out. Big surprise, rage candy bars are always the really elusive item. Planet berries and then completely forgotten about them. Yes, I know the struggle. Uh, she has berries on sale, or at least uh, this person does. Yes, you can buy figgy berries, wiki berries, mago berries, agua berries, and ayapapa berries. All the same effect. I guess I could buy an agua and an ayapapa because I don't think I've seen those yet. 
just kind of here if you want to get a start on raising these. They, they can give you some good poffins, though, but again, I keep repeating myself. We're not going to be doing that yet, just because, you know, this was actually one of the reasons why I didn't want to go over contests yet, because it's one of the things I wanted to go over before we did that. Um, I've never understood why in Japan elevator girls are a thing. I mean, maybe it's like a courtesy thing, though, but it's just like, is it really, like, worth it to pay somebody to just stand there and hit buttons on an elevator? I mean... Maybe you might get sick from touching elevator buttons that have been touched by people's grimy hands all day, so maybe it's a cleanliness thing? I don't know. Let's recommend it. Do you care, uh, would you care for protein? Drink the boost attack. Well, that tells me that on this floor, we should be able to buy... Oh! Or I can get a free Poké app. The Counter app. No, it does not make you have a counter in front of you, making you have a store. No, it does not deal back damage double. It makes it so that if you want to count things out, you can uh, hit a button and count up to 9,999. In Diamond and Pearl, this counter reset it if you uh, went to, Yeah, it does in this version as well, yeah. If you go to another screen or anything like that, it resets. So I would think that it'd be very remote to see the number 9,999 on this under legitimate means, which tells me that somebody's going to be nuts enough to do that in the comments or just on Twitter or something. Uh, here... We have uh, items similar to the uh, HP up that we just got. These will permanently raise a Pokemon stats, but they are very expensive. This is getting into effort values. Um, basically, using one of these will make a stat two points higher at level 100, if you want an idea of how much this actually affects things. Um, technically two and a half points, but it doesn't work that way. There's no half points, like whenever you're actually getting up in the levels. But yeah, one for every stat. They're here if you want them. I don't think I'll be buying any of them. I'll be using any free ones that I get rather than selling them, though. Here we have X items. If you don't want to use Defog, I can suggest buying uh, X Accuracy, yes. There, it's a bit more expensive though, but using this can circumvent the effects of um, Fog, so that can be really nice. Basically just there if you, don't, if you want to carry around one less HM with you. But it does add up though if you want to use that in every battle, and you are using up a turn to do it, so just keep that in mind. You have a lot of TMs, yes. I have been looking so forward to this floor. Natural Gift makes it so that you'll do different attacks based on which berry you're holding. Protect negates damage for a turn, which that can always be good. It's, this game doesn't have any double battles, though, so I don't really think I'll do that. Uh, False Swipe, that leaves the target with 1 HP, can be really good for catching Pokemon. Safeguard makes the team immune to status problems for 5 turns, the entire team. Reflect raises the entire team's defense for 5 turns. Light Screen is the same thing, but for special defense. And you can finally buy TM70 Flash! Seriously, I don't know why this didn't come up sooner, but yes, you finally can. It's only a thousand. So if you want to explore that cave and you couldn't find your Flash TM or you traded it away, there you go. You can finally get it. So good. Really should have just not been in the game at all. You right here, though. Fire Blast is an 85% accurate fire type move that's really dang powerful. I think I want to buy that. And, uh, let's see, Thunder, that's 70% accurate, 100% accurate in Rain, 120 power, Blizzard's 120 power, and it's uh, Ice type can freeze. Cellar Beam takes a turn to charge up, but it's a really powerful Grass type move. Focus Blast is a really good special fighting type move of all things. I think I might want to buy that. And then Hyper Beam is one of the strongest moves in the game, but you need to rest on your next turn after using it. The reason why I was so excited to get here is that if I can go into my inventory, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I might want to try out Fire Blast on Supernova. As it's a normal type, it can learn a lot of TM moves, and that could be really good. Uh, let's see here. I'm not really sure I want to get rid of Cosmic Power. I only ever use the move once, though. Um, I'll get rid of Cosmic Power. And then... I think, actually, because we can always just buy as many Focus Blast TMs as we want so it's not finite, I think I want to teach this to Supernova as well. I do have some low... Oh, it can't learn that. Well, uh, I guess I have a Focus Blast TM I'm going to be hanging on to for a little while then. I'm so happy we got that, though. I don't know why I thought I could learn Focus Blast from memory, but I guess at least there's no hardships in whether or not to keep Magical Leaf or Supernova. Uh, I already talked to you. You're just kind of telling me what the moves do on this floor. Now, if we can go upstairs, once again, yeah, we still are going up. Here we have some items for our secret bases. If you want to make some really cool looking secret bases, you can buy some nice stuff here. I like this item, the pretty sink. It's just kind of a funny name. 
Could go for some more money before I do that, though, so I don't think I'm going to decorate quite yet. And get some Poké Dolls right here. These are always the items that I love in Secret Base. It's like, it always just feels so much more important to me whenever I get a Poké Doll. I don't know why. Um, You know what? No, I'll buy a Munchlax Doll. I'll put it in there somewhere. I can gaze at my Munchlax Doll all day in my Secret Base and pretend like I was lucky enough to actually catch one in the wild. You're just going to recommend stuff to me, aren't you? Okay, no. Wait, how did you know my name? Really? How do you know my name? Maybe that elevator girl is for something else, and if she is, that's really creepy. I've had enough of shopping for a while. I'll grab a drink to unwind a bit. Yes, these vending machines are also something we can buy from. You can buy fresh water, soda pop, and lemonade. These are HP recovery items, and in true Chuck and Conroy Pokemon Let's Play fashion, I always like getting these. Yes, I always like to buy a lemonade or two just because they're all right. I mean, I don't think they're quite as good, good of a value as Moo Moo Milk, but I just like them. This looks really funny. I'm sorry. It just does. I don't know what about this makes me laugh, but it just really does. It's tucked in for the front. Two buff guys standing side by side. That's all. What? What's the problem? Call yourself buff? Ah, young Pokemon trainer. As your senior in life, let me make a gift of this sticky barb. I see. You're pawning it off on me, so now I can never get rid of it. So it's a hold item. If the Pokemon holding it is hit, then the sticky barb sticks to the foe and inflicts damage. It's all right, nothing I think I'd personally use. I've shopped here loyally for years. Now they consider me a regular, ha! Huh. Well, girl, they knew my name on my very first visit. I didn't have to visit this place loyally for years to get special treatment. I got it right out of the box, yeah. Out of the box, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, that is the Veilstone Department Store. Every Pokemon game's gotta have one of these locations, and yeah, I'm really happy that we got to show this one. This is actually one of my favorites. Not my absolute favorite in the whole series, but it's always welcome when you get to a new town and you have one of these. It's just so much better than a regular old Pokemart. But with that, despite having a really upscale shopping district in a really shady town, I think we're going to end things off here. Next time on Pokemon Platinum, we're going to explore the whole of Veilstone City in all its shady atmospheric glory. Seriously, this music is really creepy that I'm hearing it again. See you guys then.